Blue is taking the world by storm and become one of the most successful children's shows of all time. It's a super wholesome show, it's got really good morals, and it's really something that the whole family can enjoy together. And it's Australian. I'm Australian. Me. Todd! The show really demonstrates such a positive, healthy family relationship. It's something that's given me a lot of joy, even at my age. My age. Hmm. My age. Back in my day, things were different. We didn't need our hands held through emotional times. We needed to feel disgusted, uncomfortable, scared for days. Part of the quintessential Australian experience for people of a certain age group involved your primary school teacher rolling out that big box television and putting in a VHS tape of the hit iconic Australian TV series, Round a Twist. Given the international success of Bluey, I thought it'd be really interesting to look at how Australian children's television has evolved over the years. The show we're watching today, Round a Twist, has become so scarred into my brain, not a day goes by where I don't remember the horrors that this show produced. I have truly never seen anything like it and I don't think I'll see anything like it again. And this show is extremely popular. I believe it's credited as being the most successful children's drama in Australia ever made at that point in time. Even the Queen visited the set and endorsed the show. And I can't stress this enough, it is a children's show. It is G-rated. But you see a teenage boy go through a full-term pregnancy and then vomit up the baby? That shit changes you. But that's not the episode we're gonna look at today, we'll save that for another time. The basic premise for Round the Twist is that a family moves into a lighthouse. There's three kids. There's Pete and Linda, they're twins, and then there's the youngest son, Bronson. The father, Tony, is a widowed artist, but over the course of the show's four seasons, he enters a relationship with Faye, the local school teacher. Every episode, something supernatural or horrific or surreal or paranormal happens to him, and they're also at constant odds with the local real estate agent, Mr. Gribble, who wants the land that the lighthouse is on. Also, Mr. Gribble's son is the local bully, so the whole Gribble family are antagonists. Now, as I said before, I haven't watched this show in many, many years, but some episodes are so unhinged that I'll never forget them, specifically the episode we're looking at today. Day, season 3, Episode 3, Whirling Dirfish. For those who haven't watched Around the Twist, I don't want to spoil the premise of the episode yet, so just hold on tight. Just trust me when I say that this episode is cooked, and you've never seen anything like it. The episode begins with Bronson and Pete preparing for the Wharf to Surf Swimming Race, an annual event. Pete has participated many times before, but this will be Bronson's first year ever participating. And he's got high expectations for himself. As they're practicing, along comes Gribble Jr. with his goons, Tiger, and Rabbit. If Bronson thinks he's got a hope in hell winning this race, he is sorely mistaken. Dude's like three foot tall. Me and Peter gonna watch the show with you on Saturday. You'll be a laughing sock. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got a hope. Things get heated and Bronson challenges them to a race and Gribbs is happy to oblige. Let's go. Gribbs gives himself a head start, but Pete is catching up. For some reason, both the families are on the beach that day and that really highlights the dynamic between the families. Remember, it's not about winning or losing. It's about winning. It's a close race between Pete and Gribbs, but Gribbs takes the win, even though he cheated. Only just winning is almost the same as nearly losing. So, he didn't really win. Well, it wasn't too close of a race, because Bronson is only just arriving now. Ah, oh, jeez, Bronson, you're never gonna be fast enough to win this race. Or is he? Hmm. As the twists are walking home, Bronson gets kidnapped. Think you can make me look like an idiot, do you, pest? Yeah. <laughs> They meant to grab Pete, but I guess they didn't notice that the person they grabbed was a quarter of the size. And they've dragged him into this aquarium shop. Oh, he's a bit small. Let's chuck him back. Very clever, round the twist. Anyway, they drown him in an aquarium. The end. He's fine, but he's pretty shaken up by the experience. The fish keeper is more concerned about the fish than she is Bronson. And for good reason. Bronson was dumped in the tank of the last breeding pair of the whirling dirfish species. I can't tell if this fish is cute or if it's terrifying. I think maybe it's too expressive or just simply it's a fish that can blink. It's a bit off-putting. But she can only find Gyro. Where could Spyro have gotten off to? Yes, it seems that Bronson has accidentally swallowed the last male whirling dirfish. But that's not the messed up part. Well, don't just stand there. Help hmm. me look for him. What could possibly be happening here? That's right. The fish is in his knob. Or maybe it's just like inside his stomach and is causing it to spin around. The episode's not super clear on that. Probably for good reason. Now you may be thinking to yourself, what kind of sick person comes up with the idea of a fish going into someone's appendage? Well, the answer to that would be God. I assume the inspiration of this episode comes from that real life fish that lives in the Amazon that uh, allegedly swims into people's... Uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, unlike that real life example, it seems that the fish has gotten here by accident. Faye and Tony are finally getting some alone time, but they're tragically interrupted by Bronson. I've started getting these funny feelings all of a sudden. I knew we'd have to have this talk sooner or later. There comes a time in every boy's life. Body starts going through special changes. Classic, classic puberty misunderstanding right there. Bronson goes upstairs and locks himself in the bathroom, testing out his new feature. He's been in there for ages and Pete and Linda need to go in. Bronson decides to let Pete in, but Linda's got to remain in the dark. This is men's business. Honestly, I'm jealous of Linda because I think I would have preferred not knowing about this situation. Whenever I get my you-know-what not wet, spin out. You've got a whirly willy So yeah, essentially every time he gets wet, his old doinger starts spinning around. Now, if it was me, I would want that fish out of my body as soon as possible. But Bronson has got other ideas. Instant propeller, just add water. Instant propeller, just add water. You see where this is going? Who the heck thought of this, man? Pete seems somewhat frustrated by this. And yeah, I'd be a bit frustrated too. Pete has a genuine shot at winning this thing and Bronson's out here cheating. Is this a metaphor for steroids? The next day, Linda is cooking sardines, much to Bronson's discomfort. I think the implication here is that the fish doesn't like being around fish being cooked, which kind of doesn't make sense because fish eat fish. So maybe the fish was just hungry? How's this fish still alive, anyway? Well, what's it eating? What's it- how's it- how's it breathe? What's the pH levels of Bronson? Now, Linda is still in the dark about Bronson's secret. Good morning, Bron. How's your whirly willy? You've got a whirly what? Oh. Oh, ne ne never mind. While the Gribbles are having some kind of press event, Bronson goes out to test his new abilities. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the shot I remember. So it's not like that now he's a really fast swimmer. He's like a human speedboat. The aquarium shop owner has turned up at the lighthouse and she has brought her whirling dirfish with her in a jar. She's realized that Bronson might have something to do with the disappearance of her other fish. It's here that gives some lore about the whirling dirfish. It turns out the females spin clockwise and the males spin anti-clockwise. The males spin anti-clockwise. I think that's very romantic. It also turns out that the whirling dirfish are facing extinction because of overhunting by the washing machine companies. That's pretty grim, but also very funny. So unless Gyro is reunited with her mate Spyro, she's gonna die. Now, I can't imagine taking the fish around town in a jar, shaking it all around, is gonna be helping the fish much either. Like, if my fish is dying of depression, I'm not gonna take it out of the tank and start shaking it around. Maybe that's good for a dirfish, though. Maybe that gets them revved up. So just to recap, Gyro and Spyro are the last two left, and Gyro is about to die of loneliness. It's up to Linda to get the fish out of Bronson before it's too late. This is gonna be difficult, because now Bronson is a swimming celebrity. Every kid in town wants to get his autograph. The news is making reports on him. For me, I don't know if the fame is worth it. Not because of concern of the species going extinct, just concern about having a fish inside me. Meanwhile, Tony and Faye finally have some time alone. Things are getting hot, heavy, and romantic. It's quiet. The kids are in bed. Isn't there something you'd rather do than sculpt? Of course. We should talk about Bronson. There's a bit here about the Viking Book of Love. That's like the overarching plotline for the whole season, so we're gonna skip over this. The next morning, the family's getting bombarded by calls from companies who want to sponsor Bronson. Must be nice. Bronson's about to get that HelloFresh sponsorship. So I guess this is now day three of Bronson having a fish inside of him, and he's too cool to give his family the time of day. Things to do, people to see. Yeah. He's now doing a signing in the park. He is willing to kill off the species for his fame. Bronson even calls security on his sister. Meanwhile, Gyro is still depressed and is making really off-putting noises. Just doing the saddest little whirls of all time. Also, to give some context and what kind of velocities this fish is moving, it's burned a hole right through Bronson's underwear. This is very uncomfortable. And very off-putting. I'm deeply sorry to anyone who's still watching the video. Even after seeing this, Bronson's dad still thinks this has something to do with puberty. Bronson's so famous, he's even got a mobile phone now. Which, at the time, was freaking huge. While Bronson's living the good life, the Gribbles are absolutely torturing their son. I'm starting to think that cheating in sports is actually pretty cool. Shout out to Lance. While everything seems to be going great for Bronson, he's kidnapped again. But this time, it's by his sister and the fish keeper. The race is in an hour, and Bronson does not want his fish to go. If this lady keeps manhandling this kid, she's gonna get arrested. She ends up summoning the fish out of Bronson's mouth, and everyone is stoked. 
Okay, okay, Bronson's not ready. He's not ready yet. After the race. To be fair, I think this fish can hang on another hour for Bronson to win the race. Like, she just got to see him for a couple seconds and surely that resets the depression cooldown. I don't condone cheating, but if you're gonna win... Like, you know, cheating's cool. Anyway, after all that effort they went to to kidnap him, they just let him go. Meanwhile, Pete overhears a plan to take Bronson out for good. I almost forgot that Pete was in this episode. Pete comes out and heroically says that he's caught them red-handed. What an idiot. They grab him and they tie him up in red tape. While everyone is preparing for the race to begin, the bullies, Tiger and Rabbit, are sneaking onto the wharf. What are these two got planned? That's right, the bullies are putting instant dry super glue where Bronson is gonna stand. Instant dry super glue. You are a genius, man. Yeah. I always love these Looney Tunes style hijinks. I wish we got more of this kind of stuff on TV today. Linda's trying to get in with the female whirling dirt fish as a last plea to Bronson to please give up the fish. Personally, I don't think that this environment is the place for that, but, you know, whatever. No, Pete, you can do it. You gotta warn Bronson. Ah, oh, okay, maybe you can't. My bad. Bronson, no! Ah, oh, phew. Bronson, no! <laughs> Pete, no! Bronson! <laughs> okay, that was, that was kind of amazing. But now Pete's in trouble again. The race starts and now Bronson is faced with a crucial decision. Does he go and win the race or does he save his brother from certain death? Come on, Bron, you can do it. Make the right decision, Bron. He's done it. He's dived into the water to save his brother from certain death. You never told me you could fly! That's right. Bronson literally helicopters to save the day. This is actually insane. There's no way they would put this on television today, especially in a kid's show. I don't think this is comparable to anything that's currently on the air. And to reiterate, this is a children's show endorsed by the Queen. Now he safely sets Pete down, but there's one more thing that Bronson's got to take care of. He's got to win this race. Okay, race time. Bronson flies back to the start and then still proceeds to take the lead. He's gonna win! However, Linda throws Gyro into the ocean. Because I guess she couldn't wait an extra minute. Gyro then proceeds to call to Spyro, leading him out of Bronson's mouth. The two reunite, they kiss, and then they swim off into the distance. That's kind of sweet. I, I, I think. Now, it's neck and neck. Who do you think's gonna win? Is it gonna be a child or is it gonna be a fully grown man? Bronson! Oh yeah, that check that makes sense, yeah. But although the Gribbles won, Bronson is the hero who was celebrated. This is such a nice and sweet and wholesome ending, considering that Bronson is undoubtedly the bad guy here. He almost made a species go extinct to win a race. The only reason Pete was in any danger was because Bronson was cheating in the first place. And now the Gribbles are gonna be even worse to their son. What? What's the message here? Well, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go off and do steroids now. Remember every like on this video, we take an endangered fish out of a man's knob and we release it back into the ocean. Now, if you want me to cover more Round the Twist episodes, please let me know. Or if you never want to hear about this show again, uh, you know, I totally understand, I totally get it, um, and I won't do that. I'm actually so thankful that the whirling der fish is not a real fish. That'd suck. God, I hate to have the whirling der fish inside my body. No amount of success would be worth having a fish in your business. Oh my god. It's already inside me, isn't it? Flying away. I'm flying. I'm flying away. I'm flying out of the video. I'll see you next video. I'm flying away.